Hello, dear friends, and welcome back. For the first time in four years, we're traveling on wheels instead of keels. Why? Well, because we haven't been home to visit family since we set sail around the world. So when we decided to haul out the boat for cyclone season and hop a flight back to the USA, we also decided to take a road trip across the country to reconnect with family and friends. trip if you don't stop at the world's largest fill in the blank along the way. <laughs> Welcome to New Mexico and the world's largest pistachio. We're about half an hour away from my aunt and uncle's house and yeah, well, pit stop. How was that for some tourist cheese? <laughs> That's green chili. Pistachio. It's sugar and nuts so I like it. Nice. You can see white sands out there. Hopefully we'll make it over there one day. That was fun. Was fun. Fun's over. Get back on the road. <laughs> this is a serious trip. Exactly. No time for fun. Maybe. We can change our world around. Okay, one of my favorite things about this trip, it's 85 degrees right now, down here. And once we go up there, what do you think? 20 degree difference. 20 degree? Yep. 65 degrees. Yep. Oh, and it's going to be like pine trees and beautifulness. Uh, and it's, it's like desert. desert and it's beautiful. It's just desert beautiful, not forest beautiful. Maybe we should hold against the odds. Maybe favor plays our cards. Like that, scenery's completely different already. What are we at for temperature? 72 degrees, 73 degrees. Uh, we're about halfway up maybe. My ears are popping like crazy. <clears throat> the first thing we often ask someone right after we learn their name is where's home for you? Not because we need to place them somewhere on a map, but because this seemingly simple yet deceptively complicated question tells us something because the connection between who we are, where we're from, and where we call home can reveal so much. After 10 years of full-time travel, my concept of home has been broken down, shattered into what feels like a thousand pieces and scattered around the world. Home isn't so much a physical place for me anymore, it's people. A little town of Cloudcroft. <laughs> 66 degrees. <gasps> Still got a little bit higher to go. The psychology of home is a slippery subject for me, which is why I often evade the question. But through this road trip home, I'm going to attempt to answer that question. I have not seen my aunt and uncle in probably three and a half, maybe even four years. Because, uh, yeah, I haven't seen them since we started shopping for the boat, much less moving in and being gone. It's been a very long time. And they're kind of like my mom and dad, more so than my aunt and uncle. I've grown up with them my entire life. Uh, I've lived with them for a while, right out of high school. Uh, yeah, so it's, I'm very excited to see them. And I'm very excited to um, introduce them to you. They've been in past videos before, but probably only one that I can think of. And I think it was here in Cloudcroft and it was the golf like it was a cross-country scramble for Halloween and we were dressed up in costumes and it was ridiculous fun so this is like 2011 or 2012 but anyway if you want to go back in time you can watch that for a good laugh so it got down to 62 for a minute then it went back up to 65 Lucky guess. I called it. <laughs> it's not exactly a lucky guess. It's pretty much a known thing that down at the bottom to up at the top of where my aunt and uncle's house is, it's about a 20 degree difference. And it's been that way for, 
I don't know, the 10 years or however long it's been that they've lived here, so, yeah, no. I'm willing to bet that my aunt was responsible for that little guy. Don't look! What are oh. you making? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made it! Yay. This is what happens when you have too much time on your hands. Oh, just a lot of creativity. <laughs> That's where you get some of this. Uh, it's she a genetic is, thing. Well, it's it's her grandmother. This is my Aunt Rebecca. Okay, now we have to film that. We've caught her in the middle of making decorations for their community. She's the most creative, loving, and selfless person I have ever known. The kind of person that makes you feel special just because she loves you. I've been here for all of maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I've been put to work, <laughs> as per usual, but on crafty things. So check out, what's her name? Okay, well... Maudine this, Julian. This is <laughs> Maudine Julian. <laughs> there it is, the little cabin in the woods. So cute. Hey, that's what I was thinking. It's pretty Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then that's where she stays. Oh my goodness. <laughs> then there's my Uncle Mike, army vet, police detective, and security man. He can be a tough nut to crack. That is, unless you're a duck, turkey, deer, or just about any animal. He's tough as nails on the outside, but sweet as honey on the inside. <laughs> okay. I filleted my very first fish ever, and it was out of this pond. We caught it down here, and normally they just catch and release. I guess some people eat them, but normally we just catch and release. But because I'd never filleted before, my uncle let me keep one. We took it up to the house, showed me how to fillet it. It's probably a little trout about that big. There you go, Dexter. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see, I've been here for several days now, or we've been here for several days, doing a whole lot of just what you do here in Mayhill, New Mexico, which is enjoy the forest and the trees and the birds, elk, deer, feed the ducks, you know, just relax, which is why my aunt and uncle live here. They used to live in Dallas, Texas, which is where they worked when they retired. They drove around for a while in a motor home, kind of touring the country as well, and then wound up here, fell in love with it, and bought this cute little cabin here. My uncle left this morning. He was headed off to go see the drag races or something like that. He was very excited about it. Him and a buddy were going. And so now it's just my aunt, me, and Jason. Jason's upstairs editing. We have a project today, and that is Jason's mom's new RV. So we have borrowed this. We've been road tripping. It's how we got here. And, well, it's new, and she hasn't really had a chance to kind of like really organize or do the little embellishments, the things that make it feel like home. And my aunt and I are gonna tackle a couple of those things today, and I thought I should show you what we're doing, because they're fun little like organizing tips and things like that. Anyway, get to it. So how's it feel to be back in an RV? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff's still breaking. I had to mess with the head. I had to fix some stuff, so it's not any different. But I can call somebody and there's parts right here and I can take it to the dealership and have them fix it, so that's pretty nice. Yep, that is nice. Um, been in this for about two weeks now and it's comfortable. What is it? It's an Airstream van. Atlas. Atlas, 2019. <laughs> it's fancy. I think it's a little too fancy, but I'll go into more of that later, I guess. Uh, but the beds back here, that's probably the most interesting thing is it's a Murphy bed, so the sofa comes down, and the bed lays down on top of that. And nice big kitchen area for a small van or small RV. Yeah, because this is, what do you think, like 24, 26, maybe, 25, something like that? I don't know. Uh, and then the big, big bathroom and shower, which is pretty much unheard of in a small RV, something this big. It, and it is sizable. Yeah. 
Can you get in there? Because yeah, it's always hard. I mean, I'm wearing shoes. It's fine. It's a show. Sorry, Mom. I'm not supposed to be wearing shoes in here. I know. I like your rules, though. <laughs> cool. There you go. There you go. Okay, hold on. I'll, uh... You want to come in? That's okay. See that? The big... Oh, it's really messy in here. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, all our crap's in there. Uh, but that, it's big closets, which yeah. is really awesome. Decent sized little pantry. Yep. <laughs> Horribly designed though. I don't know what they were thinking. Because there's Huge. no back, so all your stuff just falls off. Huge fridge. Massive. It's full of beer. And wine. That's all we need. <laughs> little freezer. Um, tiny, tiny little stove. I would have gone induction, but hey, that's just me. The silliest little trash can. Oh, this is not supposed to be an in-depth review. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what else do you want to know? Uh, I Should don't we show know. Should the bed? You could go ahead and tell people one of your complaints. So, in the size of the bed, they include this like hard thing. It sits like an inch and a half down below the mattress, so when you lay in bed, you're like this. Or if you come to sit on the actual mattress, then, then your feet stick out. Yeah. But then they want you to buckle it in down here so it doesn't fall down whenever you raise the bed up. So it doesn't really make any sense. Because then you can't, I mean, because otherwise you could lay this way. Yeah. Because there's enough room this way. Yeah. Okay. I got lots more to complain about. That's if you right. Want to know, you should really no. just ask in the we'll, comments we'll just, below. Yeah. Cover that in another I'll video. Do a video on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go back to work. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. This van is going to be mom's full time home on the road. And since she so kindly loaned us her home for this trip, we're surprising her with some nomad friendly housewarming gifts. This is Mary's new Depresso that we got for her. And we did this because, well, it's still a pod machine, but it's easy for her and she needs small, compact, simple. She didn't want to have to carry a separate water kettle because she's not a big tea drinker. And the pods are all made out of aluminum. They're recyclable. Nepresso's even made like a bicycle out of the recycled pods, which Mary's a big bicycler. So we're thinking she's going to really love this. Storage is one of the biggest challenges when living tiny. So things like suction cup baskets and hanging organizers are a dream. We're going to attach that right there. But the trick is getting them to stay put when you're driving 65 miles an hour down a bumpy dirt road. <laughs> okay, and now begins the moment where we're just going to kind of go through and stick down everything. It's like the command strips, but it's all in a row and it'll hold a brick on the wall. You can take it down, wash it, reuse it. So you can keep anything down. Yes. Uh, pictures or paintings or today we're going to use it for the coffee maker. The yes. mugs, you have to give it the, like, she's driving crazy test. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that is really not going anywhere. Now I mean, we plug it in. wow. And stretch it. <laughs> no, it sounds like a workout video. And wrap it and stretch, stretch it. Two, three, four. It's moldable as well. Yeah, it's so nice. It's like putty, but kind of sticky. Okay. Earthquake test or Mary <laughs> And that's with all that stuff in there. Okay, look at that. Perfect. What organization? She's gonna be so thrilled. I know it. Yay! And if she's not, she'll lie to me and tell me she's <laughs> it work. Yay! Yay! And that's it. She's all. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. She, she, Mary's all secure. Yeah. So we think. Yeah. Only time will tell, but we will report back. Okay. Thanks. Thanks so much. Over and out. Over and out. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Bye. Boats, RVs, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Stuff just doesn't work sometimes. Okay, we're good. Bye, Bye, I love you. I love you too. 
on the road again. <laughs> Dang it, we ain't on the road again. Oh, man, it smells. <laughs> it does smell. Woo! That is like, woo! Yeah. Like, oh. Like home? No. That's, well. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's just really bad. It's like gray water and sewage and rot. I don't know. It's terrible. <laughs> oh. It just keeps going. Yep. Woo! Welcome home. Oh, hey, cut. Sunny day, take me down to Culver Lake. Take me back to Yesterday, cause that's where I belong On a rainy day, take me to that old cafe We'll watch the teardrops drip away with everything that but it said heart population 1114 and whenever I left it was population 1121 so clearly I have left along with a few other people and nobody knew has moved in <laughs> so that greenhouse there I used to work night shifts with my grandmother there whenever I was little and I thought it was the greatest thing ever because all the truckers would come in to get weighed and they would give me candy bars and cokes and so you know it's like an eight-year-old like heaven and you got to stay up all night it was amazing go through the light right yep go through the blinking light the one blinking light oh all the trees are dead and been chopped down looks terrible here we be welcome to my childhood home. This is where I grew up, spent most of my life here, left the day after graduation for Dallas, Texas, and well, yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. I met Jason, worked, lived, and then eventually decided to set off around the world. But um, I thought today I would just kind of give you, I don't know, a quick little rundown of my hometown. It's a funny thing coming home. Nothing changes. Everything looks the same, feels the same, even smells the same. You realize what's changed is you. F. Scott Fitzgerald said that, and it's how I feel. Grab your on your is that it? Is that down? Yep, whole town. It's the whole town? That's everything. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> this is the feedlot. I don't know if it's still owned by the same people. I used to work, well, I didn't work. My dad works the night shifts and I used to come up here with him all the time. Weighing trucks, watching cattle, making sure everything is good. If you've never seen a feedlot before, this is what one looks like. It's not very glamorous. Number one crop used to be cotton. Now I think it's corn or something else, but it's not cotton anymore. They still do a lot of cotton, and this is what cotton looks like. If you've never seen a cotton plant, it's a, loads of people have never seen the cotton plant, which blows my mind because I grew up with them. And I used to work not this exact field, but worked fields in summer with my best friend Rachel, and we worked on a little spray rig, and we sprayed all the weeds in between all the cotton rows. And that was our summer job and how we earned money. And that is what cotton looks like. And this is what it turns into. Pretty cool. This is the local newspaper. It's now called The Pulse, but it used to be called The Heartbeat. At least it was when I worked here. So my truck. 
So it's called The Heartbeat and it is owned by Neoma and Rachel Wall is my best friend. We used to work in here with her mom and we would paste up ads because it's back in the day when you would have to use like wax to roll it on to big sheets of paper. And then you would take those sheets of paper down to the printer and they would start to print out your newspaper and I sold ads. And as you'll start to learn, I did a lot of different jobs at a lot of different places around here. I also used to like clean shelves at the Cozy Corner, which is a little shop. And then down on the other end is a flower shop and I used to help the lady who owned that put arrangements together. So you work lots of jobs when you live in a small town like this. <laughs> And then right over here, there used to be a blue building that was the snow cone stand. And that was also kind of connected to the newspaper. And Rachel and I used to make snow cones after school or in the summers. And we probably ate more than we sold, but it was fun for us. And sadly, it's no longer here. So you can't get a snow cone anymore in Mark that I know of. <laughs> 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 One more job to add to the long list is I was a bank teller at the bank because my senior year they do a program at the school where you're allowed to work half the day and go to school half the day. So after lunch, I would come here and I was the little drive up teller, so I'll take you by the little drive up window. You're so hilarious. <laughs> Were you impressed by that? Oh, I was driving skills. Fun fact, this is where they held the Miss Hart pageant and <laughs> Mickey senior year and she won. She was Miss Hart, 1990, nope. Nope. 2000, yep. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at her right here. <laughs> Volunteer fire department, lunch hour. post office. Every second the Longhorn like Diner still going strong after all these years. See, I've been but it feels so right now. That was my elementary school. And that was my high school. Elementary. High school. This heart's been broken. Yes, I can. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? I thought I recognized you. Is it Nikki? She is. You doing okay? She is. Miss Superstar. And now you know my real name is Christine Nicole Burris. And I've always gone by Nikki. So that was me, senior portrait. That's my class. 26 seniors. And now, so 26 seniors. Fast forward to 2018, and there are 12 graduating seniors. The town is shrinking. That's my aunt Becky. Or Rebecca. Now let's see if you can find my dad. So oh. funny. Class is out. So there are only two halls in the school. This is all of junior high and then high school. Is this 
tall. And there are, there used to be like 400 kids between elementary and high school when I went to school here, and now there's like 200 combined. So tiny. That is my baton. It was in the band. It was a twirler. They wouldn't let us have real flaming batons, so we had to do these with the fringe on them. Played the French horn. Ran track, cross country, played tennis, played golf. One district every year, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> That's it. Two cent tour of Hard High School. Got the American flag flying behind you. My dad wanted a picture of me on his bike, and the trade-off? He has to ride my bike. That's a wild ride right there, buddy. Right? A lot of kick for a bicycle, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's something else. So what do you think about my bike, Dad? That's pretty, pretty awesome. That's quite a bike. <laughs> What a bike, man. That'll <laughs> rock and roll, won't it? Yeah. Shoot. Thrilling. I can't possibly include all the places or people that make up my sense of home. But we have one last stop on this road trip of my life. This is my sister Sadie Brooke. Most people call her Sadie. I call her Brooke. We're 10 years apart in age, and I took custody of her when she was 14. Our story is deeply personal and one that isn't mine alone to share. But I can tell you that she's an incredible mother to the sweetest, silliest little girl and a baby boy. Oh, how I love these tiny humans. <laughs> he looks like he said, you've had one too many tequilas. No more tequila for you. She's also the most talented photographer I know, so this is a shameless sister plug. You should check out her Instagram feed and give her a call if you want to capture the best moments of your life. And speaking of the best moments in life, I typically think of myself as a nomad and not really having roots. But through these moments of being home, I'm reminded of just how deeply rooted I really am and the importance of coming home. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure and do so. And don't forget to ring the little bell so that you get a notification when we publish our next video. See you next time. Ha ha ha!